I'm going to talk a little bit of these materials. They are mainly about made by of cellulose. So I'm going to we are now going to hear a story of cellulose. And what is the amazing thing that they can be very hard, like this one, or the one that I have here, or this like something like this, which is super soft. So um, and uh, I want to tell a little bit of things behind our work. So why? Then I tell a little bit of uh, what, how we are doing the things, and then also a little bit about what we are doing. And that's my background. So I have the I c that's where I come from, from the middle of the forest in Finland. And uh, then I used to work for industry, so have a very strong industrial background, a commercial background. And now I've been in this uh, very experimental environment at the university already a couple of almost over ten years. And um, what is the, this, like, like we already heard, that is, there's so much interest on these bio-based materials nowadays. Bio, by the way, it's really interesting. I, I don't know if I use bio-design or if I say bio-materials or bio-based materials. It's still, it would be interesting to a little bit talk about, to talk also about these definitions, what is what. However, uh, you know, most of you know the reasons behind this. There's, there's a lot of uh, people are more aware. We have huge problems that we are facing. And of course, the, there are also new technologies are coming all the time. But there is also uh, industries also interested in renewal. So in a way, we are in a situation where there is push and pull, so for several reasons. So it's really um, kind of the momentum now for all these kind of things to happen. And uh, you know this, this is, of course, nowadays, this has become the key driver, for example, in the education now. So we definitely need to connect these uh, sustainability, goals, sustainability goals to all, all whatever we do. And because people don't know where materials come from, so it's also one thing is to, to show that, for example, in, in how, how materials are connected to these different fields. I think they are connected to all the fields, but at least these ones with a black circle. Uh, at the university, what is a nice thing in our, at the, our university is that there is, at the university strategy has this kind of collaboration embedded, which means that, uh, because I, come, I have the background in, uh, I'm a designer and I, I, I work uh, for arts mainly, but I also work also for the chemical engineering. And now it, it's definitely helpful when you have the backbone, <laughs> so you have the, really the, the strategy and, and support to set up these things. Um, this is from our lab, what we have. It's a ChemArts lab. It's at the School of Chemical Engineering, and it's, it's, it's been designed for us. It's kind of a mixture of a, a chemistry lab and, and a design <laughs> studio, still requiring, for example, all safety uh, exams before you can enter there and, and work there. So it's not totally free, which is sometimes our design students are a little bit kind of a complaining. So what the hell? Why do I need to learn these safety rules? But that's essential. And uh, we really would like to uh, inspire designers and material researchers to, to work together, no matter if they are the first year BA students or if they are our top level professors, research professors. So that's been our, our aim for a long time now. Um, these are just some, some examples of, of the things that, that we've been, our students have been working with. For example, uh, there are beautiful um, things inside the bark. Uh, this is an example of, uh, of uh, sunscreen, because uh, but, um, why I'm now, I'm a little bit escape, uh, confused, because I think this is the, another presentation that I had. This was the former one, or? Okay, that's the one you have. Okay, good. So in the, in the <laughs> spruce bark, uh, you can find beautiful extractives, for example, for sunscreen. There is another thing, um, for example, if we think of the natural cosmetics, there is this kind of um, wood-based materials offer plenty of new ideas and possibilities how to, how to um, turn this industry more sustainable. We also work with uh, other things than cellulose, uh, wood-based cellulose, for example, with the residues, like in this case, it was tomato stems. They also contain cellulose, by the way. Cellulose is one of the most abund abundant materials in the world, so it's everywhere. It's in trees, but it's also in plants, it's in algae. Uh, and uh, yes, why? The question why. Finland is covered with forest. 
we have 60% of the land with the forest. And, and of course, we also have, it's mostly privately owned, so there's a very personal, my family owns forest. What would I like to do it? Would I like to use it for as a raw material, or would I like to use it for some other purposes? So it's very also personal, personal approach. And we need to find the balance that we are not, we, we need to have, find new ways to work with these uh, uh, economical issues, definitely, in the future. <sighs> That's where our forests are going now. That's the main, main products that are made of, of cellulose currently. Packaging, it's growing hugely. You, you, you would think that e-commerce might be somehow sustainable. It's not, because more and more packaging material is needed and, and transportation. And then, of course, there's uh, uh, more and more uh, increasing, increasing demand for so all soft papers, like toilet papers and, and wipes and whatever disposables. So it, that's a good question. Do we really want to use our precious raw materials for these purposes in the future, or should we find something more value added? And one big thing is, has been the textile fibers recently. So there's a plenty of research going on related to that. Uh, yes, this is the uh, cellulose-based materials. Uh, you can get different kinds of derivatives. I will tell you very shortly about the, the, in fact, about how the nanocellulose is made. Uh, textiles is, uh, is uh, one, of course, we already have nowadays viscose, uh, lyocell, you know, most of them have those on your or garments already. They are made of birch or bamboo in some cases or eucalyptus. Uh, if you want to touch this material, you can visit us and the beam. There we have some, some examples of that. Here you can see it. It's a new technology to use this, this kind of cellulose-based materials, either virgin ones or recycling, recyclable things. For example, cardboard or, or uh, packaging or paper. So basically, this uh, cellulose can be recycled at least seven or eight times. So it's quite a nice material if you, a raw material also for the, to keep it in the loop for the circular economy. Here is also some examples of the, the, the uh, our, the pro I, I'm a facilitator myself, so I'm not doing design work so much. Oh, I, that's, that's my, my, my design is that I try to design this collaboration between science and design as much as I can, and I try to find ways how to implement those collaborations. Uh, this is, by the way, super interesting technology. Um, it is monomaterial. Its cellulose has been partly dissolved in this case, and that means that um, uh, you, will you, can you will be able to combine soft and hard parts in one uh, knit, for example. So you could have hard parts here and then very soft, when it's still monomaterial, and when it's monomaterial, it means that it's very easy to recycle. Here you also see the, see the, it becomes very hard. It looks like, it might look like the polyester, but it's not. It's, it's cellulose and it's biodegradable still and recyclable. This is how this, uh, if, 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 because uh, we are working a lot with nanocellulose and in fact here you see how the nanocellulose is produced. So basically uh, from trees to pulp bales, then to wood, but the pulp, these are the things that, for example, papers are made of this pulp. But then afterwards, it can be somehow treated, either mechanically or with the enzymes or with, uh, with uh, chemi some chemicals. And then we get different kinds of nanocelluloses or microcelluloses or microfibrils or so, dif with different names. It's not, of course, one material. It's a plenty, a range of materials which have with a very specific properties. This is also, in fact, from chemistry, <laughs> from a chemist point of view, it's a grown, it's microbial cellulose, so it has been grown to a very complex form, but it's also nanocellulose. Uh, this is also made of nanocellulose. It's kind of a wooden ceramics made by one of our students. It's hard, so later on, if somebody wants to touch it, you can you can try it. It's very very light and durable, but not water resistant. So it, this will not solve the pro <laughs> problems yet. But it's quite, quite interesting. It can be also, because it has a life of its own, so it means that it's uh, really, uh, it goes to shapes when it dries. 
For example, in this case, it has been, uh, it's PLA, which has been covered with nanocellulose that when it tries, it makes whatever it wants. So in a way, it's, it's because it's a dead material, but it's still very much has its own agency. Here you can see more examples. Cellulose, uh, different certain cellulose, uh, nanocelluloses can, can be also used for gluing things together. But like I said, no, not water resistant. So they are, they are if, I, if we would put these ones, for example, in the humid place, they would just disappear. This is uh, also with the uh, side streams, so meaning it's feather, chicken feathers. Uh, one thing I wanted to explain, in fact, Ruben asked also, how to explain this structural color very, very shortly. Uh, one beautiful thing you might have seen is how to make a structural uh, color of um, nanocellulose. In, in this case, it's on a glass, and it is, it's uh, based on the uh, nanocrystal, cellulose nanocrystals, in fact. When they are in a liquid format, they, can, uh, they, they want to organize themselves so that they can form these uh, thin films which are with, with a specific structure and then with the light we get this uh, beautiful phenomena which will not disappear with light, uh, UV light and uh, if we also here think that it's um, they are also monomaterials so it's a thin uh, nanocellulose uh, finishing or surface on a wood but still we have these beautiful, colorful effects. Uh, thank you. This is also cellulose here. You can see it can be conductive. In fact, it has been carbonized here and to, to, get it, to make it conductive. So that's also quite interesting future if we could have a biodegradable uh, conductive materials. Would be quite nice. <laughs> um, and if you want to see more and touch these things, so you are welcome to see us at the Veeam on the third floor. We'll be there and I can tell you plenty of things of cellulose. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>